This is episode 118 of the Christian Travelers Network. Today we'll be talking about a Bible study for travelers. Welcome to the Christian Travelers Network, where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey Christian Travelers, thank you for tuning in today. I'm really thrilled that you are here because we're going to be talking about a Bible study for your travels and specifically for you as a traveler. How can you have Bible studies um, when your routine is constantly changing and all the ins and outs of that? So make sure that you stay tuned. I want to quickly point out that if you are looking for other faith and travel resources, want to know about some of our upcoming trips, or get involved with our community, all of that information is on our website, christiantravelers.net. We are a faith-based travel agency, and we love creating opportunities to bring Christ into all of your adventures. And today's topic is a Bible study for Christian travelers. So we're going to start exploring and diving into that. But before I do, I want you guys to go ahead and comment below. What does your Bible studies look like when you're traveling? Is that something easy for you, difficult? What are some of those challenges? Go ahead and comment below. We look forward to reading some of them and hopefully we'll answer some of those in this episode. But if not, you can always message us too. We'd love to help you and work with you to solve some of those situations. So the first thing about a Bible study plan for travelers is that it's just that. It's a plan, and going into any travel situation without a plan sets you up for kind of losing that intentionality that you might have in your daily routine. And if you don't have it in your daily routine, hopefully some of these tips will also help you incorporate it into your routine. Um, It's something I think we all struggle with. We have seasons where we're really good, but then it almost becomes something on our to-do list. And then we feel like it isn't as authentic of a relationship with God if it's just a to-do list item. So we kind of wrestle with that. But planning it in is so important. So let's go ahead and look at how to plan your Bible reading material. The first thing to acknowledge is that each of us are different. God made us all unique and different. Some of us are auditory learners. We learn by hearing things. Some of us are very visual learners. We can see something and remember it forever. Some of us are hands-on. We like making things and applying things and being super hands-on with our learning. And obviously, we can learn from all of them, but we're all a little different. And then we have different hobbies, different passions. Um, While we all might be Christians who enjoy traveling, some of you um, really enjoy exotic destinations. Some of you really like touristy destinations. Some of you like being in the outdoors, and some of you just want to be inside in the air conditioning all day. So, we're all different, and as such, our interactions and the way that we um, study God's Word is going to look really different. So, it's important for you to plan your Bible reading material and your uh, Bible topics with that in mind. So, if you're someone that works really well with auditory, being in um, a study with other people, having conversations, even the hands-on learner is going to do really well in a community setting. And the visual person can too because maybe you're going to remember something that someone else demonstrated. But some of us, we're going to learn really well visually, so it's best to watch a Bible study where someone speaks on a topic and then you have to go to your Bible and read it. Some of us um, are hands-on, so we need to journal a lot. Some of us are very creative, so we need to like paint a picture. Some of us are more straightforward and logical, so we need a list, a bullet point list of our takeaways. There's so many ways to engage with scripture, and I encourage you to Google and research 
different methods of engaging with God's word. One of them that I really enjoy is 365 Days of Creative Devotions by Eliza Rich. That devotional has like 180 different ways from going and having coffee with God to creating a video game to um, so many other things in between and just a very unique way to engage with scripture. So plan your Bible reading materials and kind of your just general vision of what it could look like based on who God has made you. Maybe you are someone who just really like you're going to blaze through it and you're going to read 15 chapters of the Bible a day. I know that sounds like a lot. I do know someone that's doing that currently, so that's where the thought comes from. But maybe you're someone who's literally just going to read a verse and just meditate on it. You're going to sit there and say that verse over and over until it's memorized, until it's um, like something you're breathing in and breathing out. And it just kind of allows you to really meditate on what God's really saying there. There's just a lot of different methods. So go in with more than one, but um, go in to any Bible reading plan having some kind of plan of what engaging with God is going to look like. Are you going to go to coffee shops? Are you going to do something artsy? Are you just going to read it on your own? Are you going to be in a group? Have some ideas. And as a traveler, if those ideas involve other people, that's okay. So part of your planning process right now is finding out what opportunities are where you're going. Is there a community Bible study going on? Is there something in that area, a church that you can connect with? There's a lot of opportunities, so be aware and plan accordingly. Then the second thing is ensure you have a Bible that suits your needs. There are a lot of Bibles out there with lots of different translations, and I don't really want to get into all of that, but there are charts out there that can tell you how little or little a translation it is to how in slang with our language, um, it's, it's kind of verbalized in a way that maybe is more understandable and where all those crossroads meet. Some of my favorites are the CSB, the NLT, the NIV, and the ESV. Um, those kind of are a different range, but then you also need to find charts that show different reading levels. There are reading levels for little kids, like the International Child Children's Bible. ESV, I think, is considered a college-level reading. NIV is high school. There's different things to consider. And additionally, there's different tools that Bibles can come with. Some, it's literally just the words, and that's it. If you're someone that's like really understands scripture and you that's that's all that you need, great. I always recommend a study Bible. That means that they have a commentary with them. They have something that helps you understand what happened in that biblical context. So there's a lot of things in scripture about men and women's roles that today rubs us the wrong way. There's a lot of things about slavery that rubs us the wrong way. And that's because we are bringing a 21st century observation into something that was happened 2,000 years ago or more. We need to have an understanding before we can apply it to our lives. We need to understand what was going on then. So having a study Bible that can break it down and say, okay, this verse didn't make sense, but here's what was going on and why they did it this way and breaks it all down for you. And then helps you understand, okay, so that might have seemed like, in our day, that would seem like a different, like, men and women role. It would have seemed a little harsh. Here, it turns out that the reason that women had to stay in isolation from other people after giving birth was, it was kind of like a maternity leave for them. And, oh, that makes so much more sense now. There's just a lot of different things that when we first read it, it doesn't make sense. Like, God made a helper for um, Adam. We tend to think that sounds really um, almost derogatory, but that's not what God meant it. So we can look at the study notes to explain and kind of help us understand the cultural context, understand things. Just like when we travel to different places today, uh, there's different cultures, different customs, and understanding that means we'll handle a situation differently. We'll be careful not to high five or handshake with a left hand because that's the hand you wipe with. We won't show our feet because it can be seen as very rude. So those are just things that 
you know, when we understand a context, we can understand and apply better. And, you know, if you're planning to journal in the margins, you need space in there to be able to do that and color pictures, etc. Uh, there's just all kinds of different things. And then lastly, research the best places and times to study God's word in each destination. If you have an itinerary going in ahead of time, now, will everything go perfectly? No, but you can kind of go ahead and plan it. And maybe you uh, won't know the full itinerary until the day before. So go ahead and each night, go ahead and pick, I'm going to schedule this time for my devotional time. Or maybe you don't really know at all, like you have no plan at all. So be willing to be flexible or get up early or stay up a little late for that devotional time. And with that, I really recommend, especially as a traveler, be journaling about the things that you're seeing, experiencing. It, it, pictures never really do it justice, and it, over time, it can be warped in our minds. So writing it down is great. And then when you do your devotional time, writing what God's teaching you, writing how you saw God show up in your travels, it's so huge to remembering that and being able to communicate that with others. And if you're looking for a travel journal, if you go to christiantravelers.net forward slash resources, we have one there that has lots of amazing prompts to help you uh, journal about your experiences, journal about God, and then be able to bring your travel testimony home. So really encourage you to check that out. So I hope that this is some inspiration for you as a traveler on how to be intentional and be prepared ahead of time of your travels to incorporate God in. And then on top of that, if you don't have a devotional life going on right now in your day-to-day, -day, this can be a great place to start. And if you just need some devotional ideas, if you need some help getting in the right direction, please message us. We would love to help you find those resources. We'd love to help you get connected with different tools. There's a lot of stuff out there. Um, I, I have a background in theology and church work and church leadership, so I have a lot of connections with a lot of people that might be able to help us out in that discussion as well. So it it's, goes beyond me. God has amazing people around me that um, might be able to point us to some resources too. So please reach out. Please let us know if we can help you in any way. I hope that this has been some inspiration into being intentional with your devotional life. And if you enjoy this episode, please like it, subscribe. We're aiming for 100 reviews this year. The more reviews we have, the more people that will get to hear and see these episodes. So please help us out in that regard. And then if you want to be with other travelers who also love the Lord, also love being in community um, and exploring God's words with others, if, if one of your ways that you grow is in Bible studies and being with others, we have two retreats coming up, one in Florida, one in Punta Cana. They're going to be great chances to explore the communities, learn culture, connect with other Christian travelers, and spend time intentionally in God's word. And we're going to use some of those tools of journaling and reflecting on how God has been showing up. So please, please, please head to our website, christiantravelers.net, for more information. Or shoot us a message. We'd love to tell you more. Until next time, safe travels and God's blessings.